Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman in the Automatic Transmission Lab at Pittsburgh State University and we have another lesson on compressors. And so this is our uh, sixth video on compressor identification and basic operation. And today we are covering rotary style compressors. And so uh, if I take a look at this compressor right here, this is a fairly common compressor that we see on uh, Toyota's. And so uh, a rotary style compressor does not have any pistons. And so, so this particular uh, compressor, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty, once you, once you see it a couple of times, it's pretty easy to identify. You have a, very, you have a centerpiece right here that is a cast iron, and it looks like it has two heads on, 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 on the end of it, but it's, um, you know, it's a very busy compressor. It has a lot of segments in it. Um, but um, when you take a look at it at the top here, it has it looks like something that the voltage going through the clutch is going through before it goes to the clutch, and that's called a thermal valve. So if you find a thermal valve on your um, on your uh, uh, compressor body, then good chances it's a rotary style compressor. And this style of compressor is a vane style compressor. And so I have another one here that's a little bit smaller, a little bit easier for me to pick up, and it has a handle on it. And so I could uh, spin it around and um, take a look at that and you can see the veins in the very center there in the, what I'm going to call the pumping chamber as I spin the input shaft here the clutch is engaged those veins are going to be thrown out and so vein style pumps are are nothing new uh, we see them in well power steering pumps is a vein style pump some uh, automatic transmission pumps are a vein style pump uh, in the hydraulic industry they use uh, vein style pumps uh, where the, the veins will fly out and they'll use the, um, the, the pumping chamber as a sealing surface is what it is. So there's necessary, not any pistons in it. But that thermal valve is, um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heat sensitive. So if the body, so the thermal valve goes into the body of the compressor where that pumping chamber is. And if that pumping chamber gets hot, extremely hot, uh, uh, if there's low refrigerant flow, there may not be adequate uh, lubrication flowing, uh, pack oil uh, flowing through the uh, refrigerant. And that could cause the pumping chamber to start to heat up because again those veins are riding sealing on that uh, cast iron surface and they'll start getting hot and so so i'm always concerned if i touch touch a, a, a compressor and it, it's hot and so if it gets too hot that, that thermal valve will open up and uh turn off your clutch and help try to protect your compressor a little bit for maybe an undercharged condition uh, a situation where you don't have um, as much oil as needed to, to keep that compressor lubricated uh, there's there's more than one uh, configuration of a, a vein style compressor. So this one, I this compressor right here, I um, I took apart, and you can kind of see it. I can spin the hub. Maybe there it goes. You can kind of see the inner chamber there. It has three veins on it, and so you can see that if I spin this fast enough, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that with my fingers. But those veins are gonna gonna fly out, and they're gonna have you know one side of the pumping chamber. Maybe this side over here is gonna be the uh, the inlet side, and way over here on the other side is gonna be the outlet side of the pumping chamber, where it's gonna squeeze the refrigerant through, and it's gonna pump it out. And so, so that's one design. I have another style over here. So there's more than one way to do a vein style pump. Uh, this one you got the um, the actual uh, vein shaft in the very center, and you actually have two pumping chambers. So maybe this right here is going to be your suction port and up here on top is going to be your discharge port or your outlet port. Same thing on the other side, you can have a suction port on one end and a discharge or outlet pump uh, port on the other end. So if I spin this guy around, you know, I can't spin it around fast enough, but those veins are going to fly out and cause a, um, a sealing surface, which is going to allow it to um, pump refrigerant through the system. And so if I take a look at these, um, uh, up, yep, right there. So if I take a look at right there on that one right there, that's your thermal valve. So again, if I see a thermal valve um, wire going through the clutch, and good chance it's a um, the vein style pump. Uh, you know, you can see that this chamber right here is your uh, your pumping chamber right there. So you know, just by identification of the um, the body of the pump, I do have a, a blow off valve right there in the front. So if refrigerant pressure gets way too high, the refrigerant's going to come out through that. Uh, that, that, that valve. Those are, are self sealing so um, uh, if, the, if the pressure gets up to let's say 500 pounds of pressure, maybe the fans are kicking on or something, and, um, the, um, the, uh, the refrigerant will um, escape out of there. <laughs> it's, not, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty loud noise, you know, when you, when you hear it go off and you're under the hood, you're jumping back. You got a cloud of um, refrigerant oil coming out at you. Uh, but, but, but once the pressure gets down at a satisfactory level, um, 
250, you know, 275, maybe 300, that's self-saving and uh, that will seal back up again. And so, so you won't lose all your refrigerant. So when the car comes in with a, um, a low refrigerant charge, you may think there's a leak and could be that you have inaccurate cooling of the, of the, of the condenser, you know, the fan's not kicking on, causing pressure to get up way high and that could have caused that, that blow up about the, 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 to go off. And take a look at this other pump and seeing if there's anything. Oh yeah, so right here, I got the uh, thermal valve I took out of it. Maybe it was in the back somewhere. But the key is, is that it's just a little temperature sensor is what it is. So, you know, it's very, it's a two hour temperature sensor, uh, a switch we'll call it. So, you know, so it's normally closed. So when you check it with an ohmmeter, you know, you should have very, very low resistance. And, um, and if it gets hot, you know, it's gonna open up. And so if you ever own one out and it's open, you know, you, your clutch is kick it on, you know, your, your fuse is good, you got your relay engaged, but you don't have power going to your clutch. You got power down here to this connector. Could be that your thermal valve got hot, went open, and it never reclosed again. So that's something to check on. Take a look at this compressor right here to see if there's anything interesting on it to point out. No, I got my um, thermal valve up here on top, right there. Okay, and that's our uh, vein style compressor, which is a rotary style compressor. Uh, stay tuned for our next video segment because we're going to talk about the other rotary style compressor, which is the squirrel compressor. This is Scott Norman, and if you're looking for more educational uh, videos, especially on air conditioning or any, really anything else in automotive, uh, you can take a look at my Professor Pinte YouTube channel. I'm also on Facebook, and I have a website. Just look for Professor Pinte. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.